Okay, so we're back with turn number two, and at the uh, during Alyssa's villain phase, we got this wraith out, and now we are going to have to figure out a way to deal with it. So it's Arjun's turn, and his normal at will powers can only do one hit point of damage, and that's if he hits. The Wraith has two hit points, so we would kind of like to uh, figure out something that can do two hit points of damage, so we can try to take. So we can try to take out this Wraith. Now I don't like the idea of using these power cards this early, but we don't have like a strong villain in this game. So is this in the Wraith, the Wraith, the Gargoyle. Uh, the Blazing Skeleton, those are kind of the worst the worst monsters we're going to run into. And among those, the Wraith is probably the worst of them all. So I feel like it may be worth going ahead and using our Precise Strike to try to take down this Wraith. And the good news is, if we miss, we don't even flip it over. <clears throat> and we also have... The lucky charm so if we miss uh, if we attack and we get a bad roll we can roll again so we, we get we got a pretty good chance of taking this wraith out so I think we're gonna take this option <clears throat> so Arjun's going to attack with his precise strike and he rolled a 10 I think that's high enough let's see yeah yeah 10 plus 11 is 21 more than enough to take out the Wraith, although I did forget something until just now. Uh, once the, the special ability, the Death Shriek, when the monster is destroyed, each hero on the tile takes one damage. I kind of forgot about that, but um, I'm not going to change my mind because I want this Wraith gone. So we flip the card over. Arjun killed the Wraith. So it goes into our experience pile, and we even have five experience now, so we can cancel an encounter if we need to. Take the Wraith, put it into our pile of monsters, <coughs> <coughs> and update our sheet. So the first thing is each hero took one hit point of damage with the Death Shriek. And now we'll update. So, uh, no surge, we attacked... And we killed, so we get a treasure card. So we're going to draw a new treasure card for Arjun and see what he gets. Hopefully something good. Even just a hit point gain would be nice. Short Oh, hey. <laughs> that works out really well. And then that, that's one of the reasons I don't like holding on to my powers too long. Because when you draw these treasure cards, if you have all your powers turned up then the these types of treasure cards are a waste so that worked out perfect so we used our special power but we immediately get to flip it back over that's pretty nice <clears throat> okay so now uh, we're gonna have Arjun move now that the table is clear of monsters we need to keep exploring so let's uh, slide everything over and let's have him go this way so he's going to go to this unexplored edge and have a look and see what he finds. So we'll go to our dungeon tile stack, flip over, and we got the a white triangle. So that means no encounter. So let's update. So Arjun attacked, then he moved, he explored, he got another white tile, and the skeleton, uh, I forgot to get rid of that, is gone, the wraith is gone. And now, uh, there will not be an encounter, but you always draw a monster when you get a new tile. <coughs> and it's going to be a Cobalt Skirmisher. These are a little annoying, they got a really high attack, but not a super high AC. And they only do one damage, and there's no consequence if they miss or anything like that. So they're not, they're not too bad. So we put down the Cobalt Skirmisher. And we just update our notes here. So with this turn, we got a Cobalt Skirmisher. Again, the Skeleton's already gone. So the Cobalt Skirmisher. So the encounter would now happen if we were going to have one. Luckily, we got a white tile. <clears throat> so the Cobalt Skirmisher activates. 
And the way it works is <clears throat> it attacks um, the closest hero with the javelin throw if it's within one tile. And it is within one tile. And uh, let's see, one, two, three. Um, one, yeah, uh, Arjun's a bit closer, which is good for me. He's got the higher armor class. So he's a little bit harder to hit. But that Cobalt Skirmisher does have a plus nine. So we'll see <clears throat> how it goes. So it rolled an eight, and that's going to hit because eight plus nine is 17. And that is just enough to hit Arjun. Now we can re-roll that die if we want, but I think we need to save that for <clears throat> a situation where it would do us more good because taking one HP isn't so bad. So that hits us for one. And the Cobalt Skirmisher ends his, uh, ends the fight, which ends the villain phase for Arjun, so we move on to Alyssa's hero phase. Now, probably, yeah, okay, I already know what I'm going to do. Since Alyssa has precise strike, she can move adjacent to the Cobalt Skirmisher and just instantly kill it, no questions asked. And because she has Scout, she can still explore without being adjacent, so that'll work out well. Uh, she has a movement speed of six, so I don't see any trouble getting over there. One, two, three, four. Um, I don't know if we can walk on the table or not, so we'll just go here. We could also go uh, one, two, three, because you can go corner to corner. Four, five, six, although that wouldn't make us adjacent. So we're just going to come over here. So we're going to move Alyssa so she is adjacent to the Cobalt Skirmisher. And yeah, she's just going to careful attack, no roll required. She just automatically does one damage. Skirmisher only has one HP, so it goes down, goes into our experience pile, and that will be it for the Cobalt Skirmisher. That means Alyssa also gets to draw a treasure card, so let's draw that card. But before we take a look at it, let's just set it down here, and let's update our paper. So she did not need a healing surge. Uh, she did move, she attacked, and she will get a treasure. So let's go ahead and take a look at that treasure now and see what she got. More hit points is always good. Glyph of Warding. Uh, use this item during your hero phase instead of attacking. Place the Glyph of Warding marker on your tile. The first monster that moves to that tile takes one damage. All right, that'll be useful. I can imagine this will become in handy to take out a monster that has two hit points. So she'll be able to use her careful attack to do one. Although this has to be used instead of attacking. We'll have to figure out how to make good use of that. And Alyssa's going to use her scout ability to scout the area up here. So yes, she's exploring. So we'll draw a tile off the top of the stack and see what we get. Oh, a white tile. How nice. Although... When I see several white tiles, it always makes me nervous because I know that what's coming up is lots of black tiles. So we got a white tile, so no encounter, but we do get a monster. So let's draw out a monster, see what we get. Gargoyle, he probably the second worst. Well, one thing about the gargoyle that makes them not so bad is that You'll notice the otherwise condition. If you're at the otherwise condition, is the art gargoyle does nothing. So if we can get far enough away from the gargoyle, we can just ignore it. And sometimes I think that's the best strategy. So we'll take out a gargoyle and place it on the uh, the bone pile here. It will get at least the one attack because it will get to go during the villain phase. So she got a gargoyle, and currently there's no blessings or markers that we have to worry about. Um, again, there's no villain, so the wraith's already gone, so the only thing she has is the gargoyle. Again, normally the encounter would go, but now, uh, since there won't be one, just going to be the gargoyle activating. And its tactics are, if it's within one tile, and it is, it moves closest... It moves to the closest hero's tile and attacks each hero on that tile with the whirlwind of claws. Well, the good news is... Uh, Alyssa is the only one on this tile, so luckily she will be the only one that will get attacked. But unfortunately, the gargoyle has a plus eight attack, and 
If it hits, it does two damage and slows you down. If it misses, it still does a damage. So we need to roll pretty low. And that's not pretty low. It's an 11. 11 plus 8. It's going to be 19. More than enough to hit Alyssa. So she will be slowed. And... And she takes two damage. So that's going to bring her down to three hit points. Okay, so with that, um, and again, it's only going to attack her because she's the only one on that tile. If Arjun was on that tile, it would get to attack him as well, but he's not. So that will end turn number two, and we'll come back with turn number three.